From Puritans to presidents, abolitionists to rabbis, artists to ethicists, Americans have understood the text of Esther to speak to their moment. It has offered solace to immigrants, forged solidarity, impacted politics, and roused individuals to realize that deliverance was not to come from some other place, but from their own heroic actions on behalf of their people. We too turn once again to Esther, to the timeless scroll that continues to urge us to find strength and redemptive possibility in the least expected of places. In every movement, leaders guide and inspire the participants, and leaders themselves are inspired and stirred by visionaries. You could say that Angelina Grimke, born in Charleston, South Carolina in 1805, was a visionary. She was a political activist, an advocate for women's rights and suffrage, and along with her sister Sarah, was one of the few white women of the American South to become an abolitionist. But where did visionaries like Grimke and others like her find inspiration? In ancient Persia, there ruled a king named Xerxes, whom the Bible refers to as Ahasuerosh. His advisor, the wicked Haman, hatched a plan to have all the Jews of Ahasuerus' kingdom killed. However, his plans were foiled by Queen Esther, whose Jewish identity had been a secret, as well as by Mordecai, Esther's cousin. The story is included in the Hebrew Bible as the Book of Esther, and the miraculous events are commemorated and read publicly by Jews every year during the holiday of Purim. Angelina Grimke, along with other female authors and activists, including Sojourner Truth, drew courage from the Book of Esther to address slavery in America, a crime they viewed as an existential threat to American society. Is there no Esther among you? Grimke thundered in an influential pamphlet she composed in 1836, urging her fellow Southern women to follow the example of the Jewish queen, who went from submissive female to one motivated by sacred conviction. Read the history of this Persian queen. It is full of instruction. Quoting Mordecai, she begged, Think not within thyself, that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shalt their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. Listen too, Grimke urged her readers, to Esther's magnanimous reply to Mordecai's powerful appeal. I will go in unto the king, which is not according to law, and if I perish, I perish. Harriet Beecher Stowe heard Grimke's plea to act boldly like Esther to save those subject to degradation. In her 1852 book, Uncle Tom's Cabin, Stowe also drew from the model of Esther to produce a work meant to inspire the action needed to save her country from the slow genocide of bondage and subjugation. Like Angelina Grimke had done, Stowe appealed to the religious ideals and theological sympathies of her readers, causing them to feel the scourge of slavery and imagine the possibility of a society more responsive to the principles of humility, justice, and mercy. And on September 7, 1853, Sojourner Truth addressed the Women's Rights Convention in New York City. Speaking above the hecklers who had come to disrupt her speech, she reminded those in attendance of an ancient scroll that told the tale of the Jewish queen in Persia and the holiday of Purim. There was a king in the scriptures, Truth said, and then it was the kings of the earth would kill a woman if she come into their presence. But Queen Esther come forth, for she was oppressed and felt there was a great wrong. And she said, I will die, or I will bring my complaint before the king. The Grimke sisters, Harriet Beecher Stowe, and Sojourner Truth along with many other abolitionists and advocates of equal rights, drew on the Bible and the ancient story of Queen Esther to envision a better America. Esther's courage, character, and conviction inspired them and their fellow citizens to rise and redeem their nation. Read Esther in America to find out more. Available wherever Jewish books are sold.